It was just 60 years ago that 4,835 of America's banks went broke and closed their doors, leaving shareholders and depositors destitute. The underlying reason that this happened was the lack of moral courage by our regulators and elected representatives to just say no to powerful moneyed interests. Instead of just saying no, Washington handed the banks the equivalent of an ATM card to the Fed's discount window to speculate in stocks. At a time when Japan, the second largest industrialized nation, is reliving the 1930s in America, complete with banking insolvency, it is amazing and preposterous that we should be discussing rolling back Glass-Steagall. We also want to remember that the political dynamics that created the backdrop for the banking meltdown in the 30s grew from a corrupt, cozy culture between Wall Street and Washington. U.S. Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas, who knew a thing or two about the matter, having just served as chairman of the young new SEC before he went to the Supreme Court, he called it what it was chicanery and corruption. Frank Vanderlip, coincidentally, an actual former president of National City Bank, wrote in the Saturday Evening Post at the time that lack separation of banking and securities contributed to the stock market losing 90 percent. I'd like to repeat that. 90 percent of its value from 1929 to 1933. The public was so sickened by the hubris and corruption that an entire generation stayed away from the stock market. It was not until 1954, 25 years later, that Wall Street once again reached the level it had set in 1929. There is a compelling body of evidence that suggests a corrupt, cozy culture has once again enveloped the brains of Washington. We can hardly look to the safekeepers of the public trust when they are falling over themselves to reap campaign windfalls from Wall Street. Washington and regulators are quick to criticize moral hazard when it's on foreign shores. Let's look at the moral hazard incubating at Travelers in Smith Barney. In 1996, when the SEC and the Justice Department found that Smith Barney was one of 24 firms fleecing their own customers through six or more years of price fixing, no one went to jail. When, within the last two years, when a special prosecutor found that Smith Barney had bribed the former U.S. Agriculture Secretary, again, no one went to jail. The firm is currently under investigation by various municipalities for the fraudulent markup of Treasury securities. And that, in fact, is enough to hold up this merger, since a criminal charge against a primary dealer of Treasury securities would lend its taint to one of America's major money center banks. 